Mika and today I have a riddle for you. I need you to help me solve this riddle. So what goes up and down but never moves? If you think you know the answer to the riddle, you can type below in the comments. You guessed it right. The answer is stairs. Stairs go up and down, but they never move. All right, so that's all for our riddle today. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Hey, vintage kids. I am so excited to be joining you guys for episode two of Kids on the Couch. We are going to make something awesome. Ready? Drum roll to find out what it is. We're making ice cream. That's right. So it's actually really easy to make and I'm so excited to show you guys how to do it. Let's get started. You are going to need two small sandwich bags per person. This will be what's gonna hold the ingredients for your ice cream. One large bag per person. And that is going to be where you put the ice so that you can freeze your ice cream. Then you're gonna need a big thing of ice. So make sure you've got lots of ice in your freezer before you start this project. You're also going to need uh, three tablespoons of sugar. I've got mine all measured out already. You're also going to need some kind, some kind of milk. We don't have regular milk in our house. We use oat milk. So you can use any kind of milk for this project to make ice cream. And if you're dairy free, then you can use dairy free milk like me. You're gonna need a cup of milk. So measure out one cup of milk and you will be ready on that part. The last ingredient that goes inside your bag of ingredients is going to be two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Last thing you're gonna need is salt, lots of it too. So if you have one third cup of third cup measurement, that is what you're gonna use to measure out your salt. Another thing that you might wanna have on hand is some oven mitts because we're gonna be shaking that bag of ice with our hands and we don't want our hands to freeze. So you can use oven mitts, you could use a, some towels, you could use some paper towels, you could even put socks on your hands. Um, that would be silly, but it would also be awesome. So find something to kind of protect your hands from getting too cold when you're shaking that bag. First step is washing our hands. So we got all our ingredients, we got everything ready. Now we need to clean our hands. We're gonna turn on the water, get that all ready to go, get lots of soap on our hands, and we can sing happy birthday. Whose birthday do I know that's happening soon? My cousin Lainey has. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, Lainey. Happy birthday to you. Okay, I washed my hands, I'm ready to go. First step into making ice cream is going to be putting our ingredients in our bag. So we'll start with our milk. We measured out one cup of milk. We're gonna pour that into the bag, just like this. Ooh, I already can't wait, wait for some ice cream. All right, next step is gonna be the vanilla. You are gonna use vanilla extract. You're gonna put two teaspoons into your bag. So we're gonna measure it out. First teaspoon. And you know what? I think we're just gonna do one teaspoon. Let's just do one teaspoon of vanilla. I think that's what it called for and really I'm not too sure. I don't wanna make it too vanilla-y, but it depends on how much vanilla you like. I wouldn't do more than two though. That would probably be too much vanilla. Okay, you've got all your ingredients. That's it, three ingredients. The milk, the sugar, and the vanilla. Now, you are going to seal up the first bag, and you wanna make sure there's not a lot of air in there, so try to get the air out. I'm just gonna get out. And then, seal up the second bag, and then try to get the air out. And now, we are going to put our ice in the big bag. So, let's open up our big bag 
and we're gonna get our ice we got ready earlier. We're gonna put it in the bigger bag. If we do make a mess, we always clean up after ourselves. All right, now we've got our bag of ice and we have our sealed up ingredients. Let's shake those ingredients up all together. Now we're gonna put this right in the middle of all the ice. Middle of all the ice. Last thing we need to do before we shake it up so that we make ice cream is putting one third cup of salt. So you're gonna pour the salt in. We're going to put that salt all around in the ice. Okay, everything's in there. We did the milk, the sugar, the vanilla in the ingredients bag. We put our ice in the big bag. We put our salt in there. Now we just need to zip up that big bag and get the air out. Put on our hand protectors, whether that's oven mitts or socks or whatever you're gonna use to protect your hands from getting too freezing cold. And now we're going to shake like a lot. Let's just all shake this ice cream up together. Let's go. I found a hack is actually putting it in a Tupperware. So ask your mom and dad if you could use a Tupperware to put your bag in and shake it like this. Okay, so it's been six minutes and you know what? It's starting to get solid to like an ice slushy. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt too to see if I can get it extra cold in there. The salt makes it nice and cold. Okay, and then I'm gonna shake for a couple more minutes. All right, it's time to find out. I did three more minutes and I actually think that helped a lot. So let's see. Ooh, it feels like ice cream. Oh, I'm so excited. I love ice cream. Comment below in, if you're watching it on the premiere and you're one of the people watching it live premiere, comment below and tell me if you love ice cream too. I can't wait to see how this tastes. All right, so we shook this, it ended up being about 10 minutes, I think, of shaking. And look at that, we've got some ice cream in there. Okie dokie, it's time to taste and see if it's any good. Oh, that is so yummy, oh wow. That is really, really good. That's such a good treat. Mmm, okay. I recommend one teaspoon of vanilla. You do not need te two teaspoons of vanilla because that would be way too vanilla-y. So make sure you only do one teaspoon. <laughs> All right, vintage kids, if you made ice cream today with me, I want to see what you made and I want to know if it was good. So you can either email Kit kids at vintagegrace.org with a picture or you could tag us on instagram help your have your mom help you with that um you can go on and have your mom post a picture of the ice cream you made and tag us at vintage kids edh that's vintage kids edh okay we are so excited to see the ice cream you made i hope that yours turns out as delicious as mine mm. thanks for making ice cream with me i'll see you next time guys had fun making your ice cream. I sure did. Hey, I have a question. Easter's almost here. At Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And at Easter, we celebrate his resurrection. But something happens in between those days that we don't talk about a lot. On Good Friday, Jesus dies. Now, why would we celebrate a day he would die? That seems nutty. But we knew that his death was actually the beginning of saving the whole world. It's good that he died.
which is why we call it Good Friday. And then on Sunday, three days later, we celebrate his resurrection, which means he came back to life and he proved that he really was the son of God. And then he went into heaven where he sits at the right hand of God forever and ever. This is cool. Easter is so much bigger than Easter eggs and the Easter bunny. But my question is this, why did Jesus have to die? Wasn't there another way? You know, we actually look at scripture and it says that there wasn't another way, that this is what God had planned and what God needed to do. I want you to think about it like this. If I was driving down the road and I got a speeding ticket, I would have to pay off that speeding ticket. Let's say it costs $250. Is there any other way for me to pay $250 other than paying $250? I don't think that I could like bring the police officer groceries or mow his lawn or babysit his kids and get the $250 charge off. Nope, I'd have to pay $250. And that's the same thing with our lives. We've made bad choices and God said every bad choice needs to be paid for, but we couldn't afford it. We couldn't pay for all of our bad choices. And so he provided a way, a payment for all of the world's bad choices. And he said, if you believe in my son, Jesus, if you believe in me, then his death will be the payment for all your bad choices. How cool is that? How cool that God said, I love you so much that I am willing to let my only son live a perfect life and die a horrific death so that your bad choices would be paid for. That's what we celebrate at Easter. From Good Friday to the day he resurrects, that's what we celebrate. So this Easter, my challenge to you is to think about and talk about with your family, why did Jesus have to die? He loves us and God provided a way. That is amazing. Thanks, Miss Jen. Hey everyone, starting this week, we are kicking off something new. Every Saturday, someone from our team is going to be reading you a bedtime story. This Saturday at 7 p.m., Miss Taylor is going to be reading you her favorite book to start us off. Next, FaceTime with friends. Have your parents sign you up to get a phone call from us. We miss seeing your face every week and this is a way for us to connect with you and get to chat for a little bit. Lastly, we want to know if you're keeping up with our Sunday curriculum. Let us know by taking a picture of you with your activity and posting it to Facebook or emailing us. We want to earn enough tribbles by the time that we're back in church so that we can start off with a huge party. So let's keep going. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, here's Kids on the Couch.